morning. Welcome to chapel, and we are sixth grade, and we're leaving chapel this morning. Um, This is the day that the Lord has made. Lift up your hearts. Please stand for our first two songs, My God is So Big and Shane Breaker. It's time for God's sightings. How have you seen God at work in the past week? He helped my sister to feel better. Um, he helped her sister get better. That, si that sixth grade is leaving chapel. That sixth grade is leaving chapel.
like Nana got home safely from her vacation. That is Nana got home safely from vacation. Is that for when we do um, chapel? God loves us. God loves us. Um, I, I love my mom and my dad because they, cause they love me so much and I love them back. We thank God that we have parents. Jesus loves us. Jesus does love us. Jesus, make my sister thought of her brother. Jesus gives us our daily bread. Jesus is with us every day. My dad's sick. So. Good boy, your hair is sore. Okay, I'm going to give my sixth graders a second to get set. Yep, it's go time. All right, so I'm not actually going to read this because our entire skit is based off of 1 Samuel chapter 17, which is the story of David and Goliath. At the end, there'll be some uh, epistle and gospel stuff thrown in. So we're going to jump right into the message as soon as they're in their places. Okay. Today we will see three versions of the account of David and Goliath. The first one will look like the familiar Bible account. The second two will also look familiar, but less like the Bible account. While you watch, see if you can spot the giants in the second two versions. Now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle, and they are gathered at Soko, which belongs to Judah, and encamped between Soko and Azekah and Ephes Damim. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered and encamped in the valley of Elah, and drew up in line of battle against the Philistines. And there came out of the camp of the Philistines a man named Goliath of Gath. He was nearly ten feet tall and wore armor that weighed 125 pounds. May who you come out to fight me. I am a Philistine, and you're an Israelite. It's not... Is not that what we're supposed to do? Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight me and kill me, then we, the Philistines, will be your servants. But if he kills, but if I kill him, then you shall be our servants. We're just figuring out who will do the fighting. We can't fight that guy. I can't fight that guy. How about you fight him? No way. In fact, I think I left my donkey on him. I should catch it before it runs away. Now that she mentions it, I think I might have left a lamp on. I should go blow that out. Just a second. We are going to fight. Going to get the other guy. I defeat the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man to fight that we may fight together. Hey, Ishbiano, you better get working on the chore list and plant your new field. We're going to have lots of help. Our king is searching for the very best man. I hope he is taller than the rest of you, short stocks. I certainly hope that he is braver than you. I hope I... You fearful and cowardly ants, I certainly hope this best man is handsome. I don't even know what the rest of you look like. 
So far, all I see is Israelites running sandals and back of heads. They were greatly afraid. Now David was the son of, Je- of an Ephrathite of Bethlehem and Judah named Jesse, who had eight sons. Jesse was already old in those days, which is why he sent David, the youngest, to give flour to his oldest brothers. It was then that he told King Saul, Let no man's courage fail because of Goliath. I will go fight this Philistine. Let's take a look at a more familiar Goliath. See if you can spot David. Come on, get up, since no one else seems like we're going to help you up. Why not? Too ugly to fight? Just what, too short? Too weak? You're right. I bet you're too afraid to hit back if I even tried to hit you. Let's test that out. And in our last scene, try to spot Goliath. That was a terrible presentation at school today. I don't think it was too bad. I mean, the teacher didn't seem disappointed, and my parents told me it looked good last night when I did that practice presentation for them. They have to say that. They're your parents, and so what if the teacher wasn't disappointed? It's not like their opinion really matters anyways. Everyone else looks so bored. They probably think you're stupid. I bet you're the stupidest in class. That can't be true. It is. No, I got all B's in my last report card. Maybe I'm not the smartest, but that's not stupid either. Pretty sure the teacher did that because they felt bad for you. No, maybe. Isn't that illegal? Probably, but it's not like anyone cares enough to double check your grades are all right. Yeah, you're probably right, but I still think I did okay for how nervous I was going into that presentation. No, it was awful. You were sweaty and that one hair just kept getting in your way. I bet none of the others could even see your ugly face because of it. Yeah, I did feel pretty gross. I probably looked gross. Am I always that gross looking? Always, always that ugly. But my parents say I'm beautiful. But they they have have to to say that. that. Yeah, guess I am ugly. I hope my crush didn't notice. They didn't because they were too busy thinking of how stupid you sounded and how good Sarah looked. Didn't even notice. Didn't notice? I guess they didn't notice I was ugly. They didn't notice because they already knew. I told you. You always looked that ugly. It's a good thing they didn't notice too because they definitely didn't notice you stumbling on the basketball court. Unlike everyone else, they probably laughed at you. Okay, stop. That's enough. I gotta focus on studying for this quiz tomorrow. Why bother? You're stupid, remember? I have to at least try. Why try when you'll probably fail? Either way, stupid. Remember that one time you studied hard at the beginning of the year? Stupid. You're right. I know I am. I always am right. In fact, you should just listen to me. You're better off listening to me and hiding in your room, or better yet, in a hole where no one has to look at you. Why stop at a hole? Maybe you're better off not existing to begin with. enough. You need to leave him alone. And why should I do that? You shall not hurt or harm other humans in their body, but help and support him in every physical need. Oh, yeah. I'm glad you get it, but I, <clears throat> but I still have to tell the principal. My child, I did not come to judge you, but to save you. So why should you judge yourself? Do not be afraid or discouraged, for I will personally go ahead of you. I will be with you. I will neither fail you nor abandon you. I will always hear you when you cry and when you call, and I will give you the grace you need.
I hope you recognize the first David and Goliath. They're the ones from the Bible where Goliath with the Philistines bullied the Israelites and made them feel like they couldn't win, nor even be worthy of protection. They forgot to trust God for that, but David did not. God guided David and his stone to defeat Goliath and inspired the Israelites to trust in God again. In the second scene, you probably noticed the Goliath of that scene, the bully. The person they bullied probably didn't feel like they could win or were worthy of protection either. Did you notice the David? Who do you think David was? Point to him. Right, it's the person in the back, the bystander. God guided the bystander to stop what was going on, say something to the bully, and then go say something to the principal. The bystander quoted the small catechism, but the Bible also says something about protecting others. Romans 15 says that we who are strong must be considerate of those who are not. We must not just please ourselves. We should help others do what is right and build them up in the Lord. And 2 Corinthians 12 and 13 tells us that we are all weak. So stop pretending to be strong and look to the source of strength. Together, those verses tell us that when we draw strength from God, we have all we need to stand up to the Goliaths in our lives. Now think about the last scene. Who was the Goliath in that one? Who do you think? Caitlin? The last one, all the way to the left. Lily? You think it was Lily? Yeah, kind of right. Would you believe it if I told you that the student was their own Goliath? The voice, it was the voice in her head. It was the voice of self-doubt. It could have been a spirit of self-doubt, but more often than not, that voice is our own. Who do you think was the David in that scene? Can you point to him? So over here, would you believe if I told you that the students, David, was also themselves? Through the words of encouragement in the Bible, God gave strength and guided the thoughts of the student to take down their Goliath. Our strength does not come from within us, from ourselves. It is planted in us through the words, guidance, and strength that God gives us. When you feel fearful, weak, or unworthy, remember where our strength comes from. Please pray with me. Dear God, please give us the strength to battle the Goliaths in our lives. Thank you for sending Jesus to save us from our sins, and thank you that we are able to live in heaven with you forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So um, we're going to be continuing with the service here in a moment, but just a reminder, we're going to have the offering, which will continue to go to share the gospel for people who live in Australia and around the world. Um, and so for kids that don't yet know Jesus, that's where your offering is going so they can know who Jesus is. So at the end of the service today, when you um, have your chapel offerings, make sure you place them in the um, offering plate in the back. Okay, and we're going to um, say together the prayer that Jesus taught us, so would you please all stand out of respect for our God, and then let's join together in the prayer of Jesus to our Father. Our Father. And the sixth graders have one last song that we're going to sing together, Glorious Day. So please stay standing for our last song. 
We have two last songs. The last one is led by our sixth graders. This is a repeat after me song. So you say what I say and do what I do. Word. God's word. God's word is powerful. God's word is powerful and mighty. Mighty, mighty is God's word that makes the devil tremble. Well done. Well, can we thank our sixth grade friends for leading us in a fantastic chapel? What a great reminder that God is the one who fights for us. We need only to trust. Friends, receive the blessing from the Lord. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine on you and be gracious to you, smiling upon you and giving you his peace now and always. Um, and you may go ahead and be seated. Um, our fifth through eighth grade friends are um, asked to stay because we have a, a special guest with us this morning, Beth Prochnow from Valley Lutheran High School, and she'll be sharing a little bit about Valley. But for the rest of you, you're going to get to head back to class. Teachers, just a friendly reminder that Next week is our awards slash jubilee celebration. So we'll be celebrating birthdays, baptism birthdays, various different academic achievements, things like that. So we're excited to celebrate with you. Um, with that being said, our youngest friends are dismissed first. And again, don't forget, if you have an offering that you'd like to place in the back, do that as you leave. Have a fantastic day. Um, and then Beth will share with our fifth through eighth graders.